Raising chickens, turkeys, and other types of birds, whether done for profit or pleasure, involves undertaking the serious responsibility of disease prevention. In particular, breeding certain kinds of fowl entails an obligation to test them for a destructive illness called pylorum typhoid disease. These birds look perfectly healthy, but if just one carries Pylorum typhoid bacteria, an egg-transmitted infection, they, along with many other breeding flocks, may very well be at risk, and the resulting financial damage could be devastating. Effective testing methods, in conjunction with proper biosecurity procedures, have virtually eliminated Pylorum typhoid from the poultry industry. This widespread success can be directly attributed to the National Poultry Improvement Plan, NPIP. NPIP is a voluntary, cooperative effort involving the U.S. Department of Agriculture, individual states, as well as the poultry industry. And on a state-by-state -state basis, it's been effectively supervising Pylorum typhoid prevention programs since the early 1930s. But even with this diligent oversight, the financial threat posed by Pylorum typhoid remains potentially serious. That's because outbreaks can still occur, and sometimes on a major scale, wiping out entire flocks. The primary reason for this is that the number of small backyard breeders, ones raising chickens, turkeys, and fancy fowl, is steadily growing. Although a number of them are NPIP members who are familiar with proper testing methods, Many others are not. The purpose of this video is to explain how small breeders, even those with little training or experience, can accurately detect Pylorum typhoid by using what's called the rapid whole blood plate test. In addition to this method, there are three other officially recognized ways of detecting the disease. They include the rapid serum plate test, the tube agglutination test, and the microagglutination test. Unlike the rapid whole blood plate test, though, these others can only be performed in an authorized laboratory. Pylorum typhoid bacteria are host adapted, with all types of fowl being vulnerable to infection. Turkeys, for instance, are very prone to the disease. For them, a serum test must be used, since research has shown this is most effective for these particular birds. Chickens are especially susceptible to Pylorum typhoid, both hens and roosters can carry the bacteria, oftentimes doing so without showing any outward sign of infection. Occasionally, though, an adult bird's joints may show signs of swelling, which is an indicator of possible pylorum typhoid contamination. The disease also causes severe lesions on many of the internal organs of a bird. For instance, look at the difference between an ovary taken from a healthy chicken and one belonging to an infected hen. Pylorum typhoid is often localized in the reproductive organs of a diseased female, with the illness being transmitted to young hatchlings directly through the egg. Unlike this healthy chick, those that are infected with Pylorum typhoid produce a white, pasty excrement. Because of this, the condition was initially called bacillary white diarrhea. The physical appearance of chicks and poults produced by infected birds can be an indicator of the disease. In addition to the chalk-white excretions around the vent after hatching, various other symptoms may be evident, such as drowsiness, a lack of appetite, drooping wings, labored breathing, swelling in their joints, a stunted or distorted body appearance, as well as a high death rate in the first three weeks after hatching sometimes approaching 100% of the brood. Infected chicks or poults that don't die of the disease may grow to maturity and remain lifetime carriers. The rapid whole blood play test, like the three other methods, is based on the fact that a bird infected with pylorum typhoid carries immune substances called antibodies in its bloodstream. When mixed with the serum or whole blood of a diseased bird, these antibodies agglutinate, 
meaning they cause dead pylorum typhoid organisms, referred to as antigens, to clump or stick together in a liquid suspension. A bird showing this type of result is labeled as being a reactor. Since the blood of a healthy bird doesn't contain pylorum typhoid antibodies, no clumps form when its whole blood or serum is mixed with the antigen. Much of the success in preventing the spread of pylorum typhoid in chickens and other birds can be directly attributed to the rapid whole blood plate test. This simple procedure, when properly done, accurately detects birds carrying pylorum typhoid antibodies in their blood. And again, this test can be easily done by anyone having a basic understanding of the procedures involved. So let's take a look at exactly how the rapid whole blood plate test is performed. Items that are needed to conduct the test include a bottle of properly stored antigen, clean coveralls and headgear, rubber boots, a pail containing disinfectant, a portable table, a glass or porcelain testing plate, a light box, a bleeding needle and standardized blood loop, a container of water, soft cloths, a holding pen for the chickens being tested, and identification bands for birds showing a positive reaction. The antigen is made from pylorum typhoid organisms that are suspended in a salt solution, but they're ones that have been chemically killed. So if the antigen should accidentally spill, there's no danger of spreading the disease. That's because the organisms in it are dead. When not being used, the antigen needs to be stored in a refrigerator at approximately 45 degrees Fahrenheit. The bottle should be removed before testing, though, to give the antigen enough time to warm up to room temperature. And immediately after testing, the antigen needs to be put back in the refrigerator to keep it fresh. Out-of-date or improperly stored antigen should not be used, since it increases the possibility of obtaining unreliable results. False reactions may occur when a large number of positive results are observed. These may actually be caused by using old antigen, which over time becomes quite sensitive, rather than by the presence of pylorum typhoid antibodies in the blood being tested. To determine the response of antigen, positive and negative control serum should be used. These are available through state animal health laboratories. For the rapid whole blood plate test, a blue or red dye is added to the antigen so the bacteria becomes stained, making it easier for the results to be interpreted. If the reaction is positive, blue clumps can be seen in the mixture following an interval of between 15 seconds and 2 minutes. This effect is caused by the antibodies in the blood combining with the killed bacteria. When performing the rapid whole blood plate test on a large number of chickens, like in this commercial hen house, it's extremely important to handle them properly so that none are harmed. To do that, the testing procedure should involve a minimum of three to four people, one or two to catch the birds, another to position and hold them, while the third draws their blood and tests it. But before beginning the procedure, it's crucial that everyone involved practice safe biosecurity techniques. This means wearing clean coveralls, headgear, and rubber boots. It's also important for each person to carefully scrub their boots with a disinfectant before entering the hen house. The first step in the rapid whole blood plate test is for a chicken to be properly positioned so that one of its wings can be extended and laid back. This uncovers the large blue vein underneath from where the blood sample is taken. Keep in mind that feathers may need to be plucked from this elbow area to expose the vein. Like the antigen, the test plate ideally needs to be somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, it ought to feel warm to the touch. If the hen house is cold, the light box under the test plate should provide the right amount of heat. With the dropper held straight up and down and close to the glass surface so the antigen doesn't splatter, normal-sized drops should be allowed to fall one at a time. Most test plates measure 10 by 14 inches. Unlike this plain one, many have a large number of squares printed or etched on them. This allows for up to 60 birds to be tested in a group, with 10 drops of antigen being applied in a row at one time. When doing this, though, 
it's important to make sure that the drops of antigen don't dry up on the plate before being mixed with blood. After the test plate is prepared, the bleeding needle should be held like a pencil to gently puncture the wing vein. Keep in mind that it needs to be sharp, so this can be done easily. To help make the procedure as simple as possible, a commonly used type of bleeding needle also has a blood loop attached. Its diameter is exactly what's needed to provide the proper amount of blood for testing. When the loop is full, without any gaps, the blood contained in it should be mixed with one of the drops of antigen. Although there are different kinds of blood loops, they all need to be made of 20 gauge wire, have a length of two and a half inches, and measure three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. The loop is used to combine the bird's blood with the antigen on the test plate. When doing this, it's necessary to mix the two together so they form a smear about the size of a quarter. After combining the sample of blood with the antigen, it's important to properly clean the needle and loop. This is done by rinsing the instrument in a container of fresh water and then wiping it on a clean cloth. With the blood and antigen mixed together, the test plate needs to be rotated for about two minutes so any reactions can be observed. Sometimes after only 15 or 30 seconds, positive results will become evident. To see this, a good source of illumination is needed under the plate. That's provided by the light box. Again, here's what to look for. A positive reaction means that the tested bird may be carrying pylorum typhoid antibodies, and it should be considered as being a reactor. This determination can be made by looking for clumps that form after mixing its blood with the antigen. Remember, there are various degrees to which this agglutination takes place. If the results are negative, meaning that the tested bird doesn't have pylorum typhoid disease, no clumping will be evident. But a true reaction shows a definite clumping or agglutination, along with the clearing of the blood and antigen mixture. Sometimes, though, dust on the test plate may look like a positive reaction. To tell the difference, remember that clumping caused by dirt takes place only in one or two spots. To help avoid possible dust, and to make sure that the smears don't dry up following a test, rinse the plate as soon as possible after the results have been determined. This is done simply by dipping it in a bucket of clean water and then wiping it dry with a squeegee and clean cloth. In the event of a positive test result, it's crucial that the reacting bird be banded to identify it as a possible carrier of pylorum typhoid and then immediately place it in a coop for additional testing or necropsy. A positive test result, however, doesn't always mean a bird is infected with pylorum typhoid. Sometimes the reaction is caused by what's called cross-agglutination. That happens when other antibodies are present, ones that are produced by an antigen closely related to those of pylorum typhoid. That's why it's important to either submit blood samples from reactors to a state animal health laboratory for further evaluation, or to take the reacting birds to the laboratory for bacteriological examination. If these tests determine that pylorum typhoid antibodies are present, then the bird should be necropsied by the laboratory and examined bacteriologically for pylorum typhoid. Isolation of the pylorum typhoid organism determines a true positive reactor. To assist in locating sources of birds classified as produced U.S. pylorum typhoid clean, the U.S. Department of Agriculture publishes directories listing NPIP participants. Their use helps to assure that diseased fowl won't be purchased and in turn infect healthy flocks. USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, also provides important information about the National Poultry Improvement Plan. Copies of these publications are available through APHIS or by contacting your state NPIP representatives. Although NPIP's nationwide testing program has virtually wiped out pylorum typhoid disease in commercial flocks and hatcheries, it's still a major problem in birds raised by some small breeders. Should the infection spread to large hatchery operations, it could cause literally millions of dollars in damage. But as backyard breeders become more aware of the consequences 
and increasingly participate in NPIP's testing program, this incurable disease affecting chickens, turkeys, and other fowl can be effectively controlled. Remember, preventing pylorum typhoid is everyone's responsibility.